Welcome to A Fables A Day, in which the archivist reviews an issue of Fables A Day up till the final issue, where he will undoubtedly cry like a baby. And there is no restraint on spoilers, so if that's a problem for you, well then go read the series and then come back. On with the show! Fables number 84, Jack's Back, chapter 4 of the Great Fables crossover. Well, Jack's back on the farm, and oblivious to about everything that's happened since he left the farm, like 70 issues ago. But he makes a beeline straight for Rose Red, who's looking horrible and has basically been in bed since Boy Blue's death. And reluctantly, in the sleaziest way possible, Jack weasels his way into screwing Rose. Elsewhere on the farm, Beast and Beauty are having their own makeup sex, which to Beauty is more than just their terrific makeup sex, but it almost feels magical, like it means something more. Jack and Red are having very, very loud sex, but she's calling out Blue's name the whole time, leading Stinky and the Blue Boys into assuming that Boy Blue has come again. No, I honestly didn't mean to make that joke. Afterwards, Stinky gives him a blue handkerchief, still thinking that he's the returned Boy Blue. And what's even sadder is that apparently Rose Red has given him complete leadership of the farm until she feels better, which Beast, Beauty, and King Cole can't do anything about since Rose Red is the director of the farm. However, he does point out that there are a few spies in the fables that were sent by Mr. Revise, someone from the Jack comics. But, Frau Totenkinder and her circle of witches say the Jack is of no real threat. They still should be focused on Mr. Dark. Regardless, Rose Red finally gets at least a little sense together, knowing that Banging Jack has been literally rock bottom for her, she kicks him out of her bed. But, as he walks out of the house with his suitcase in hand, Jack Frost, his son, confronts him. Honestly, I kind of get this issue needed to happen, for Rose as a character, I mean. She got royally destroyed by Boy Blue before he died, so we needed to see her truly hit rock bottom. And frankly, Stinky's story really needed something like this, actually choosing a false idol for his adoration, and it's unfortunate that who he places as Blue has to be that son of a gun. But hey, at least his son finally found him. Wait, wasn't this crossover about cataclysmic history erasing terror? Come back tomorrow and let's see if we finally get onto that track.